to start and um, could you introduce yourself what your personal role is and what UK yeah. Music does? Sure. Well, I'm um, Tom Keel. I'm the um, acting CEO of UK Music. Uh, UK Music is the umbrella body for the commercial music industry. It brings together all the various component parts of the sector. That is the live sector, the recorded sector, the creator organisations, the um, uh, the music publishers and the collecting societies. And we're, we're there. We've been, been in existence for about 12 years and designed primarily to bring the sector much more closely together and make it more cohesive particularly when talking to, to bodies like government and parliament, academia and, 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 and just general decision decision makers. And um, I remember we, we actually had uh, Fergal Sharkey in the university many, yeah. many years ago when it was first first uh, launching. So That's right, yeah. Um, so I know UK music actually it has been very effective from my, my perspective and um, it's in a lot of changes. Um, especially within government and DCMS, actually listening to the music industry is far more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. what, what, in the period pre-COVID, what was, this, what was the um, situation looking out like? How, how, what, was it a positive environment? Sure. Well, and then thank you for your, your positive remarks about the impact that, that UK music has had. And I think part of that is, dawn, is down to the fact that um, we've actually built a huge evidence base, a much stronger evidence base about the value of the music industry, which which was never really in, in place before before UK music. So, so we have created a number of reports over a number of years, um, which really quantify the actual economic value that the sector brings. Um, our most recent report was published towards the end of last year in 2019. And it's said so the most most recently the headline figures is that GBA for the sector is 5.2 uh, billion. Um, so we're showing continued economic growth. Exports is worth 2.7 billion, um, and uh, around about 190,000 people working within within the, the core music industry. And we've we've established that that kind of baseline work back in about 2012, 2013, and then it was around about 3.5 billion. So we've what we have seen over the, the previous decades is a period of sustained growth in, in, in all parts of, of the sector. I think you had a situation before the last decade was obviously a lot of transforming to digital. Um, they were still kind of going through that, the machinations of that and trying to find a business model for, for, for the music industry in, in the kind of new in, environment. But what you have seen is now with streaming, you've got what has been a sustainable business model and, and live had sort of exponential growth as well uh, through the way that um, uh, people have, have been supporting uh, the live sector, live sector, up, up until 2018 was worth 1.1 billion we will have a report coming out in in november which will both articulate um what the value of the sector was worth pre uh, exactly what it was worth pre pre um crisis but also then with some initial projections of what what could be like um that thereafter um so so yeah so it has been a, a, a great british success story i think in, in recent years so Okay, so uh, into COVID, mm. uh, we, we, we talk a lot, we know a lot of the immediate impacts obviously on the live music industry, which is um, obviously very, very worrying what's going on there. Um, can you give us an overview of the, of the impact in, in the music industries in general, broader than just yeah. live music? Sure. Well, I think with the music industry, I think you need to understand that it's a it's an interconnected industry. So live has obviously had the most devastating um, time of it because of the very sheer nature of social distancing restrictions and what that has then on on mass gatherings and live live performance and, and its manifestations. So we we estimate around about nine nine hundred million at least has been probably wiped off the GVA of the live music sector alone this 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 year. Um, but there is an interconnectedness um, with with the music industry because live events, when you have one significant part of the uh, sector, such as live events, when they're they're significantly challenged in this way, then you get further problems. So if you're if you're releasing, if you're an act and a new artist, you want to promote your 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 new your new music and, and record, you would you would promote that through through a live tour. And if you can't um, necessarily sustain that um maximize that that potential then it has kind of forced um record companies to um uh, release uh, withdraw sort of like their release schedules but also in terms of like things like discovering new talent talent is still discovered not just online but it is discovered in in gigs and events and um if those are not happening then the kind of a and r and the talent scouts aren't 
aren't able to go out and um, and really see the kind of quality of, um, of of acts and artists in the way they would have done previously, uh, and just generally from from our talent pipeline, and we, we're we're strongly being warning of of problems within our talent pipeline. Um, but if people aren't being able to have uh, nurture those those kind of skills. Um, in, in the way they would have done, done previously, then that's going to impact their, their ability to, to, to be world leading artists as well. Um, other side, retail was, was obviously significantly hit. Um, a lot of our, our music is, is appreciated um, in a digital online sphere now, but what but, but we have seen again in recent years is a relatively well, well sustained physical music market, um, vinyl growth, et cetera. And with, with record shops and stores uh, haven't been played for at least three months of the year and that would have had an impact on on revenues um and, and subsequent to that recording studios recording studios have had um again were, were closed and weren't able to operate and um, with returning to work issue they they had spent a lot of effort in in the summer developing guidance which is in place but again now if we're moving back to a situation where there's there's new restrictions being being put in place um, then that that may potentially create create a challenge there there, there further. So it, it, I think the obvious thing is to is to to see the, the very grave problems which are happening in live. But it would be a mistake to think that it's it's live alone which which um, which is is, uh, is is affected by the by the crisis. It, all, all parts of the industry and all parts of the sector uh, uh, have um, have have been impacted and badly hit. And then, and then kind of further down the line, when you think of things like PRS and PPL, the collecting societies, they they benefit from um, taking from live takings again, and if there aren't events taking place, then then how do we really take in that that money and con quantify that in, in in the way we've done previously? So there is no part of the industry which isn't isn't affected. I was wondering if, if there's been any of the innovations that have emerged in the last six months that are, are potential green shoots. Well, I think I think you're you're right there to highlight that, um, and I think again, music industry has historically been very adaptable to new environments and has find new ways of of, of getting to, from kind of creator to audiences and fan bases and finding ways to connect with with um, um, all parts of the um, community. So I think like live gigs, um, streaming um, gigs that way, uh, it has been an, an innovation. Um, I don't, uh, we would, so there is a possibility of, of developing new business models within that, that area. I guess the, the challenge is people still enjoy the live music experience. Um, I mean, this is in, in many ways, this is a good, this is a good, a good time for actually to have creative ideas to find, to think about how you can um, open up opportunities which uh, may have um, not been existed before in the same way that when when we had the problems of Napster and uh, digital happening for the recorded sector in in say 2000 or 1999 2000 around, around that sort of time that saw a, then a challenge and brought in new new ideas and new initiatives so I think um, new ways of get, connecting the audience and 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 the, and the creator I think this is is potentially a time particularly with the digital resources that we have available to us. Um, this is this is some a moment where where that where good ideas can can take a a, a, a life of their own perhaps. So you, you must feel that um one of you feel that the Facebook decision is uh, both a good thing and a bad thing on a good thing in the sense that it's protecting uh, royalty yes. <laughs> only on, on IP level uh, but also on collections but it's a bad thing in terms of an awful lot of art, artists with using the performance on the, the live stream performance and linking it to a Patreon in order mm. to, to retain a career so it's kind of a successful part of a campaign <laughs> and a negative on another yes yeah and I think I think there's does obviously things need to be 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 ironed out. I mean, UK music represents a very broad um, broad group of people. The the record companies themselves we represent, but also we represent individual creators who maybe aren't with a record company or who, who kind of innovate in 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 other ways. And I think again, what we had seen over the past decade, we had seen kind of innovative ways of um, of, of of say like Patreon, like uh, Kickstarter, or those kinds of like um, direct fans people really kind of invest in individual artists and enable them to, to there are there are ways that we can we can can kind of do that and we kind of still want to keep that that open and, and those kind of opportunities for for people who can't who who are, are popular and get 
get a, a, a sizable um, a, a fan base and group, but maybe don't get signed to major companies, etc. We need to f enable them to still get get an access to market and access to to, to audiences and, and fans as well. Of course, it's interesting. It's important for grassroots record label and labels and, and organizations mm. as well. Um, I'm just th thinking about, about uh, you, you, you talked there about the A and R side of things, and it's an interesting thing that I hadn't thought of that we're probably seeing right now the releases of of the the, the artists, the the grassroots artists that were signed 18 months ago, and yeah. now we're going to have this huge gap of people not being discovered in the normal, in the usual mm. way. Um, you know, I think we've got Working Men's Club and Do Nothing and those sort of art artists. We're yeah. getting a huge gap. <laughs> Mm. It's, it's you know to our talent pipeline we might suffer from a talent gap potentially yeah i mean i guess what i would say again like music has always been a great comforter i think in times of trouble and actually i think it does the actual creative experience ideas i think are flowing out there as well there's lots of people who have a lot of a, a lot of talent and can actually articulate these very difficult and challenging times that we live in through their artistic expression so actually it may what you might find is that maybe people who haven't necessarily ventured in this sphere, but because of pure circumstances that they now face them in, maybe they're more more moving towards developing talent. So we might be actually untapping some potential for some talent that maybe maybe wasn't really maybe necessarily fully realised um, before, and because of the way that people are now on furlough and or or, or whatever, or, or, or increasing rises of unemployment, um, that can be a great a, a great motivator to, to get creative and actually to 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 rise up and be be angry or, or be uh, be passionate about 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 the current situation we're in so so yes i think you're right we may we may be there may be a, a gap but actually we could be um the, the actual circumstances we find ourselves in could actually maybe bring out some kind of actual renaissance maybe out of, of new music and new, new new creativity a lot of people have spoken to are talking about um almost like a, 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 a feast when this is over uh, the, 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 uh, there's going to be a, a, a demand for going for festivals a demand for yeah. physical product a demand yeah. for experience that we haven't ex we haven't seen previously i think that's 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 right i mean i think there are some logistical challenges for that just in terms of managing events and they can be quite say tightly controlled with licensing i mean one of the things that we've been talking to government about is sort of more more liberalization should we say about when we do come out of this to actually enable like you say that kind of pent-up demand and, and people's desires for experiences if you can kind of get strip away some of those kind of more more bureaucratic restrictions that do exist then that will label label more of those sort of things you're talking about to become become a reality um, yeah, I've, I've actually, I, I haven't been to the joiners for two or three years. I, I desperately want to go to the joiners at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I'm really missing live music, like a lot sure. of us. Um, so it, it, for students who are studying music mm. industries, music management right now, um, it, it's going to feel incredibly bleak. Mm. Um, it feels to them like there is no future and there, there is no future employment. Um, are there any, any, is there any positivity we can we can offer students? Well, I think going back to what I said a little bit earlier, I think it is about that that opportunity. Um, in a crisis, it is challenging, and people um, people do worry about about the future. But as I said, the mu music industry has always succeeded on people who who are able to kind of challenge the norm and actually bring out new ways of thinking, new ways of expressing things. And I think if you're a motivated person who wants to work within the music industry, now is a brilliant time for those type of people. Those people have that kind of ingredient in, in their mind because you need to look at the challenges we face and you need to say, well, what can be done with it? Um, and how can we make the best of this, this situation? And I think the music industry has, has developed and evolved and existed through that kind of mentality and thinking. And ever more so now, we need people like that um, within in the industry who have that that kind of attitude um so so all, it may appear bleak in terms of what we understood the industry to be previously but it, it it's but there is 
I, I'm confident we will recover. I'm confident there will be a, 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 a situation where um, we do return to work and we do return to um, some semblance of, of normality. But again, as I said, I think it's, it's a time to really innovate. And, and I think that's what I would impress upon students um, and thinking along those lines. So we talked um, earlier on briefly about, about uh, regional spaces yeah. well, there's been a lot of work in, in recent years about building the notion of the music city and yeah. music centers and you have within that third tier cities um, like Portsmouth and Southampton that, yeah. sit, that in many ways become um, starved of oxygen by the by the, the centers yeah. um, these are the, the spaces where uh, um, there's, there was there was growth there um, but it's looking really really awful now mm. Yeah, uh, it's where you're seeing the most immediate impact on venues closing and and, mm. and, um, and and so on. I mean, is this a part of UK re music's remit to to be concerned with that that area as well? Definitely, yeah. I mean, we've done a lot of work um, in recent years on on that that area, the the kind of concept of a music city, and we've worked with particularly in the north of England, in Sheffield City region, Greater Manchester, and um, Liverpool City region in particular, in, in, in those areas, um, to develop um, kind of ideas. Um, we did a report in Greater Manchester, for example, ten, um, which had 10 recommendations to how to kind of take forward the industry. Um, I, I would say it, it is a matter of, of, of concern, obviously, on the, on the local basis. But I think, again, um, city centres, areas will be looking particularly because of what's going on. They'll be looking for areas for, for recovery. And I think what UK Music has is a very strong evidence base about the local, the impact on local communities about of, of an area. And that isn't just um, the areas, say, in the North is where we focus on too. Our reports have data on the South East, the South West, and exactly say, for example, what music tourism brings to a, to, to a region. Um, there's some very kind of hard hitting evidence there. So I think in terms of actually, there's definitely a road to recovery here and music will play a fundamental role in that. And so a lot of areas, local areas, will be looking for, for initiatives, ideas to get, get us, bring us back to, to some kind of recovery. And I think that is kind of what's, what I, I would impress upon for kind of people in, in areas, which you say maybe sort of second, third tier cities, which maybe aren't, Brighton on on London, but I, I think there's a there's a lot of useful information, and I think what we have we have actually seen in recent years definitely a shift in across the country. I think in terms of people really starting to value the the, the, the local um, and, and initiatives um, and what was happening. I think we we're talking a bit earlier about Portsmouth and they had the, the Victorious Festival, and I think that that has like grown immensely. I think in in the last five or six years as being. Um, uh, something that's been very successful and, and very bought into and I think that did get local that's very much I think local authority buy-in for that so there's, there's pe the people there who, 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 who are persuadable to the, to the value of it and I think it's quite impressive upon the kind of the benefits to the, the economy and the kind of spillover benefits as well of, of, of music I think that is, is something which a lot of kind of those local decision makers are, are attracted to so do, do you support the idea of um, regional music boards? Yes, definitely. Yeah, we've been, we were directly involved in both the Liverpool and the, the Sheffield City region ones, setting them up. Uh, the boards, I think they're very cohesive ideas um, in terms of like bringing the sector together, bringing the kind of decision makers, um, but also the local industries together and ensuring that, um, that progress is made. Um, things like venue closures, where there have been challenges, a lot of challenges before COVID, um, a lot of those issues were, were dealt with and managed within some of those, those kind of broad structures. And, to, and it also, I think it, in ten, also in terms of when you're, you're kind of bidding for funds outside of um, sort of central government funds, I think those kind of like collective bodies aboard can the sort of weight of the industry and the, the local authorities working together puts a lot of weight behind that too and maybe enables like central government to kind of sit up and listen and maybe put in more, more resource um, when, when bids are made as well. Brilliant. Well, that, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, one final question. Yeah. If advice to students, what one thing should they be able to show to, to a potential employer? I think commit, I, I, I say commitment and dedication. I think that is the um, um, things I would, I would certainly impress upon students to, to show. I think um, having, uh, 
that attitude and commitment to actually wanting the six an industry to succeed in the way that um they do having that 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 passion and actually wanted to kind of take it forward um and and be part of it i think that is really um essential um i think having that that kind of um drive to 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 kind of take take um um your career further within the music industry and, and wanting to exceed and accepting as i said earlier accepting that that there are the industry will go through industries will go through challenges and they do need to think of new ways of thinking and, and, and challenges um every now and again in order to adapt to new circumstances and i think that commitment and dedication would be would be um would, would shine through really in terms of that um, um that, that the way that a student was presenting themselves and also then in terms of talking to future employers and um people that they they were to work with that's, that's absolutely fantastic thanks very much for your time tom Cheers. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Will do. Take care of yourself.